Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm Mark Satawa, Principal Attorney at Satawa Law, and uh, today's video blog topic is sex crimes. Are they underreported or overreported? As experts in this area of uh, sex crimes, we're often asked, you know, you know it, it, is it true that sex crimes are overreported? Because I always thought they were underreported or vice versa. The, in the answer is actually interesting because the answer is both. Um, sex crimes are certainly the most underreported crime. Um, one of those reasons is, is because there's typically no independent proof of it. If someone is shot and killed, there's a body. If someone steals a million dollars, there's a million dollars missing. If someone steals a car, there's a car that's gone. Um, sexual assault, typically the the body of the crime, what's sometimes called the corpus delecti of a crime, is not um, is is plain. It's not as visible. It doesn't come until the victim comes forward and talks about it. For that reason, they certainly are underreported when compared to other crimes. However, the interesting uh, piece of that is is that the inverse is always true. The idea uh, that that sex crimes um, are the wor uh, the most overreported crime. Is, is spelled out and documented by a large body of research and statistics. Here's the bottom line, folks. One false allegation is too many. Ask the members of the Duke lacrosse team what kind of effect that well-publicized allegation of sexual assault had on the three boys that were ultimately charged, what kind of effect it had on their schooling, what kind of effect it had on their reputation, what kind of effect it had on their families, their moms, their dads, their siblings, what kind of effect it had on their future. Um, devastating impact uh, when falsely accused of, of an offense like this. A loss of reputation, a loss of your job frequently. Uh, in another vlog, we'll talk about the impact it has on your ability to remain in school. Um, Obviously, um, the loss of, of reputation and your standing in the community. Um, so each and every false allegation of sexual assault um, should be seen as a, as a problem, a very serious problem. So in reviewing this, uh, this question, the first place I went was the, uh, the Department of Justice. I mean, this is the alleged authority on crime in this country, and in fact, it's a prosecutorial body. Um, the FBI's own website, I mean, I think most people would look at that as a relatively uh, reliable um, and, and certainly not pro-criminal defense source. The o FBI's own website suggests that false allegations of forced sexual assault are around 8 to 10 percent. That compares to about 2 percent of all other crimes. So by a fact, four to five times more sexual assault allegations are false than other crimes. That is a staggering statistic and one that even if we believe the FBI, and there are statistics that put the figure far higher than that, but even if we were to believe the FBI puts the figure at one out of 10 allegations of forced sexual assault are false. However, as I said, when you look at the data, the data shows a much different story. Some research shows that the rate of false allegations of sexual uh, assault can be as high as 40%. You know, over one in three allegations of sexual assault can be false. The details of this research can be found on our website at satawalaw.com. But just to br briefly highlight some of these, the, um, the Innocence Project founded by uh, Barry, Neufold, uh, Barry Sheck and Peter Newfold have found that since 1989, 25% of sexual assault cases referred to the FBI where results could be obtained, the primary suspect has been excluded by forensic DNA. 10,000 sexual assault cases since 1989, 2,000 tests have been in inconclusive, 2,000 tests have been excluded, and 6,000 is matched. That is an incredibly high figure. But more than that, we go into other academic studies, um, truth and false allegations in sexual abuse in child custody disputes. The Journal of 
uh, academic of child psychiatry, um, false allegations, archives of sexual behavior, 41 percent, um, according to uh, a study done by Jordan in 2004 entitled Beyond Belief, Police Rape and Women's Credibility in the Journal of Criminal Justice, 41 percent false. 11% um, false malicious, malicious claims and 35% um, recorded by the police as no crime having occurred, adding those together to be 35% um, in a study in England uh, in 1999 called A Question of Evidence, Investigating and Prosecuting Rape in the 1990s. Again, the, 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 the facts, the studies, there's, there's uh, links to over a dozen studies that talk about these numbers, but here's the bottom line. Whether it's one in 10 or one in three, sexual assault is a crime that is different. Most of us, we're never gonna be charged with murder. You know, we're never going to go and steal a million dollars, but many of us that have gone through divorces, child custody hearings, have met someone, gone on a date, um, gone through a divorce, gone through a painful breakup with a boyfriend or a girlfriend. But for the grace of God, there go many of us. It takes the word of a person with an ax to grind, a complaint to be made, a bad motive or malicious intent, and the word of that person alone without any cooperative evidence is frequently and usually enough to charge you with this crime. That's why there's so many instances of false allegation. And that's why these cases are so different. That's why they're different than property crimes and theft and embezzlement. That's why you need a specialist and expert in these type of offenses, because the incident of false allegations is very real. It's prominent and quite frankly, stunning. So if you're faced with an allegation of sexual assault, do yourself a favor, get on the internet, do your research, find an expert, find a specialist, find a lawyer whose practice focuses on these offenses, interview that person, vet that person, ask the right questions, find the right lawyer for you, and go out there and show this that this just didn't happen, folks. I'm falsely accused. It can, in the end, mean the difference between freedom and acquittal versus conviction, prison, and the sex offender registry. Thank you for watching today's vlog. My name is Mark Satawa, and again, at Satawa Law, we are defending your rights, protecting your future.